Hi, Julie Jules Cruise Companion. As a professional cruise com and travel companion, it is my role to assist people with different disorders to be able to work through their issues to be able to go on a holiday or a cruise. So if I was working with a client with an anxiety disorder, whether it was a generalized anxiety disorder or a specific one like agoraphobia, for example, what strategies would I need to do to assist that client? Stick around and I'll talk you through my process of assisting somebody with generalized anxiety or even agoraphobia on choosing a cruise as a holiday. One thing that it's important to remember for anybody going on a holiday is that a cruise ship is one of the most safest spaces on the planet. There are so many rules and regulations in relation to safety on a cruise ship that millions of dollars are invested to make sure that you are safe, that the crew is safe, that the whole of the cruising industry is safe because an unsafe industry is not going to be good for business. The captain is always in charge. Whatever happens, the captain has the final say. If there's going to be a rough port, for example, and you're going to miss a, um, a cruise port destination because of the rough weather, it's the captain's responsibility to make sure that everybody is safe. And unfortunately, when you sign your cruise contract, some changes are going to happen. And you have no recourse on that because the captain is trying to keep you safe. When you are planning a trip, a cruise or a holiday of any kind with agoraphobia, it's really important to engage your GP, your regular doctor, your support person and maybe even a cognitive behavioural therapist to assist you in working through strategies that can mitigate any of the anxiety symptoms. Your medical officer, for example, could um, prescribe sedating medications and your cognitive behavioural therapist can work you through identifying your triggers and developing plans or strategies to mitigate them so that your support person can assist you, maybe even with a code word that you, uh, if you're having an, an increase in anxiety, that you have decided upon a code word that you just have to say and your support person knows that that's going to trigger into whatever the safety process that you have pre-developed before you even got onto the holiday and put that plan into action. Getting you a glass of water, um, teaching you through the breathing exercises or even escorting you back to your cabin if your cabin has been designed as your safe space. Part of this planning process is to work through with your support person or your cognitive behavioural therapist to identify what the triggers are that increases your agitations or your anxiety states. By doing research, because there's a lot of information online, what cruise ships look like, what the textures, the, the um, visual sensations are on a cruise ship, because there's lots of photos of cruise ships available. And if carpet, um, bright lights, um, particular colours are your triggers. It's pretty okay that you can examine beforehand and make a plan that maybe this particular cruise ship that you're intending to go on might not be the one for you. Maybe you need to travel on a smaller ship or even a bigger ship. Once you realise what your triggers are, it gives you the capacity, the knowledge to be able to make a more reasonable decision that is going to suit you and your individual needs. What we are faced with here in Australia is we actually have a pretty limited range of boats that we could choose to holiday on if we wanted to take a cruise. But if you were in the Mediterranean or, tra or traveling out of America, for example, the number of cruise ships to choose from is massive. So if you are limited to just traveling here in Australia and we have more cruise ships coming on board and over the next few months of 2022 and into 2023, what you have to do is identify which of the ships is going to be best suited to your particular anxiety needs or agoraphobia. 
With all of the information online, you can see what the deck plans are, where the orientations are to the restaurants and the entertainment venues. You can choose where your cabin is so that you have an exit strategy, an exit plan to be able to get to your safe space. The other thing about choosing a cruise if you have an anxiety disorder is choosing if you want to have a short cruise short in, short out, less disruption to your normal routine, that may be the course for you. Or taking a longer cruise, seven to 10 to 14 days, where you get the opportunity to get on board, to orientate yourself, to have a nice pattern and get into a nice routine within the ship environment. Choosing a holiday for you has to be specific to your needs and if you can identify with the pre-planning and, and the assistance of your medical officer, your support person and your cognitive behavioural therapist, you would be able to choose a better holiday that would not have as many triggers, for example, or you've put in enough safety mechanisms or safety processes that if something did happen, you could mitigate it and the vacation wouldn't turn into a complete and utter disaster. Because the other thing that we have to remember is for everybody, anxiety is a normal state of being. It is a safety mechanism. But what often happens is the fixation on it and the catastrophization of that anxiety. Man, because when you look back on your life, there's been a lot of things that haven't gone according to plan, but things have still worked out. So if you have a greater understanding about what triggers you, you can mitigate some of those triggers and develop some strategies and put them in place so that it doesn't have negative long-term consequences. It may appear that being on a cruise ship is chaos, but in actual fact, there is consistent patterns and there has to be for, for order, for ship shape and Bristol fashion. Meal times, there's the same meal time over the every day and if you want additional food there is food available all the time even if it is via the room service for an additional fee you're always going to have access to food and drink when you're on a cruise ship and you're having a meal for example and you don't like what's on the menu or you can't decide what's on the menu which one you'll have fish or chicken order both nobody cares you go to a show and you don't like it, you, or you get an anxiety attack, for example, nobody cares. Just get up, walk out, find your safe space and go there. If you want to go back to, the sec to see the show, again, you just go to the second show. There is always a solution. And this is why cruising is so good for anybody with an anxiety disorder or agoraphobia. The best thing anybody can do when they are planning a holiday, especially a cruise holiday, is doing as much investigation as possible. With the more knowledge that you have, the more you can develop strategies to mitigate any potential things that could go wrong. So if we're looking at agoraphobia, for example, it isn't just the fear of open spaces, it can be the fear of small spaces as well. So when you are looking at booking on a cruise ship, First, consider where you are going to want your cabin situated. So if you have a fear of open spaces, maybe an inside cabin is for you. If you have a fear of enclosed spaces, maybe a balcony cabin or a suite is the cho right choice for you. If you know what your challenges are, you can make the plan. And then once you have the plan, you budget around that to make your plan a reality. Everything on a cruise ship is going to be walking distance from where you are. And the longest walking distance is going to be from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. So regardless of where you are, you are less than a few hundred meters away from your destination, whether it's the safety of your own cabin, whether it's accessing food, or going and having a recreational time, having a good sing-along or karaoke or a trivia. Nothing on a cruise ship is any more than a few hundred meters away.
in relation to the fear of open spaces such as the, the theatre or some of the larger venues, there is always smaller venues around a cruise ship that you would be able to choose for your recreational preferences. If the smaller venues are not what you want and you feel claustrophobic and overwhelmed by that, just stick to venues that are on the open deck or larger venues where there are windows that you can see outside to the ocean, for example. There is always a solution for whichever element of your phobia that you're experiencing at the time. One element of agoraphobia can be the fear of not having a safe space. So if you were to investigate the cruise ship that you're intending to travel on, seeing which decks have all the food and the entertainment areas, choosing a cabin that is close to the main events that you want to go to, having some form of planning and divide, deciding on what is going to be your safe space, whether it's going to be a cabin, whether it's going to be in a public space, you just work through that with your, um, your doctor, your support worker, or your cognitive behavioral therapist. The unfortunate reality that when people are on holidays, they don't actually really worry about what other people are thinking and doing. They are just worrying about how they can get the best out of the holiday for themselves. So if you are having an anxiety attack about being around people and crowds, for example, have a strategy to remove yourself from that anxiety provoking situation. Whether you have a code word with the person that you're traveling with, your support person, to know that you are increasing in your anxiety state and they assist you to move to your safe space, that is absolutely fine. But the people around you will often not even notice because they are just focused on themselves having a good time. One strategy that I am aware of that I haven't specifically employed with any of my clients, but I know it has the potential of working. If you have a little business card that has something to the effect of, I'm sorry, I have to leave. It's been really nice meeting you. I hope to meet you again. And then you can carry that little business card. And then if you are getting into a situation where you feel that you need to remove yourself from the situation but and are getting overwhelmed and anxious, what you could do is just offer this little card to somebody and discreetly walk away. But I go back to the fact that on a cruise ship, people come and go into conversations, into groups all the time. Other passengers don't really mind if you do go away and then come back at a later date or meet them again in a different space, in a different venue, for example. That's part of the adventure of cruising. If one of your anxiety states is being in a crowd, choose a dining option that doesn't have a large crowd, such as one of the more intimate specialist dining areas. If you do have an issue with a people and large crowds in go to the main dining room, go at the beginning of the seating or go to the end of the seating when there are less people within the space. The one advantage about having a buffet on board a cruise ship is that you can get access to food when there are not many people around. Getting breakfast early in the morning before people get up out of bed, you can almost have the buffet dining room dining area to yourself. So if crowds is part of your anxiety state, there are ways around mitigating, avoiding crowds. Within agoraphobia, there could be an element of overheating and sweating. The advantage of being on a cruise ship is that your cabin, your possessions are only the shortest distance away. If you are feeling overheated, overwhelmed, you can go change your clothes, you can go into your swimwear and go and have a swim. You can go out onto the open deck and catch the fresh air and the fresh breeze to assist you to cool down. If you do end up with uh, an anxiety state where you're shivering and shaking, once again, if you don't have your warmer clothing with you, just pop down to the cabin and pick them up. If you know you are going to go to somewhere like the theatre, for example, that is notoriously a little bit cooler, you carry your your wrap or your coat with you 
on the way so that you might not need to, you might not be cold and shaking at the time, but when you get to a environment where an anxiety provoking event might occur, like the theatre for example, and if part of your symptoms are shaking and coldness, giving yourself that warm wrap may assist you in getting through the start of that anxiety provoking event. If one of your agoraphobic symptoms is dizziness and an instability on your feet, for example, there is always seating around a cruise ship that you can sit down and relax on, whether it's in public spaces, out on the open deck, down in the atrium, there is always somewhere, if you are feeling dizzy, that you can sit down and rest and with your support person, make your way back to your safe space, which could be your cabin. I know that probably sounded like an overwhelming amount of information, but rest assured that cruise ships are safe. Everybody is there for a good time. Nobody is out there to harm you. Whatever happens, accidents happen all the time. Disasters happens all the time. It's how we respond to them that is the important key. So if you do have a generalized anxiety disorder or agoraphobia, is a cruise the right holiday for you? If you investigate it enough and make enough plans and strategies, there is no reason why having a good time on a cruise ship is not going to be something that you cannot enjoy. Everybody has a bad day. Not every cruise that I've ever been on has been 100% perfect. But the whole idea is that cruising is a great way to explore the world and to meet people. So I hope some of these strategies have been helpful for you. If you are suffering from a generalized anxiety disorder or agoraphobia, that you are able to work through and come and enjoy a cruise holiday. This is Julie Jules Cruise Companion saying, stay safe everybody and happy travels. Thank you.